Good evening, I'm Patricia Vallone with a CTV News Update. The Prince George's Memorial Library System is gearing up to reopen some of its branches for in-person services beginning this Wednesday. Six branches, South Bowie, Laurel, New Carrollton, Oxon Hill, Bowie and Spaldings will open their doors to visitors on April 28th. Under the library's Phase 2 reopening plan, you'll have access to computers. You'll also be allowed to browse through a limited selection of library materials. Officials say guests must book an appointment to utilize any of the in-person services. With a significant digital divide here in Prince George's County, we know that there are over 100,000 people who do not have stable home internet. And right now with the unemployment being over 8% and with the virtual schooling needs for many, it's essential that we get folks uh, to these computers as soon as possible. And we've implemented some new features uh, like remote uh, assistance on the computer so that staff don't have to be within six feet of folks to help them at the computer. They can actually do uh, access the, the, the customer screens while they're on there if the customer requests assistance. Brown says the other branches will open later in May. Curbside services will continue to be available at all of the library branches. For more information, visit pgcmls.info. Greenbelt's mayor is censured by his council colleagues for controversial comments he made recently at the opening of a mass vaccination site. Mayor Colin Bird had berated Governor Hogan at the opening of a FEMA site at Greenbelt Metro Station. Bird attacked Hogan on his handling of the pandemic. Scores of people of color and people of all backgrounds who want the vaccine have had heartbreaking difficulty getting the vaccine because of the state's extremely inequitable rollout, because of major flaws in the state sign-up system, because of mass confusion, and because of the fact that people have had to wait in extraordinarily long lines for extraordinarily long times. I spoke with Bird earlier this morning about the council's censure. There's probably never in American history ever been a censure done without the public knowing it was coming. In fact, not only did the public not know it was coming before the meeting, even at the meeting, it was a surprise because it was not added to the agenda, it was, and it was added to the agenda in a very vague way. And so nobody had any clue that it was coming. This is not the first time you've made controversial comments that have upset some people. Um, is this something that you will think twice about now that they've done this censor? I think in the past, I may have said some things that I might not say again. But I think, you know, I, I stand by everything that I said at the opening of the female vaccination site. Uh, and I stand by sticking to the substance to the extent that in the past I've erred on the side of the personal, that is something that I'm apologetic about. That is something that I have corrected and I will continue to be mindful of going forward. The censure, which was approved by a vote of five to two, accuses Byrd of failing to exercise discretion and decorum in his position as ceremonial head of the city. Meantime, Byrd is seeking the U.S. Senate seat currently held by Senator Chris Van Hollen in 2022. You no longer have to pre-register for a COVID-19 shot in Prince George's. You can now schedule your first dose appointment at all county clinics. You can schedule your second dose appointments during your first visit. Visit mypgc.us slash COVID vaccine to set up your appointment. You can also call 311 for assistance. Maryland reports the lowest number of coronavirus cases in weeks. The state health department today is reporting 557 new COVID-19 cases. The statewide total is now approaching 444,000. Meantime, the health agency has recorded eight deaths in the last 24 hours. And you are watching CTV News. I'm Patricia Vallone. We'll be back in just a moment. For the latest information on COVID-19 in Maryland, visit the State Health Department website. That's health.maryland.gov. Again, health.maryland.gov. Click the link to the COVID-19 information portal. There you'll find all the latest information about coronavirus. You'll find daily updates on cases and fatalities. Answers to questions about testing and the governor's stay-at-home order are available as well. For specific information about Prince George's, visit PrinceGeorgesCountyMD.gov. That's PrinceGeorgesCountyMD.gov. The site offers information about local services for residents and businesses. There's a link for COVID-19 relief donations. Also, food pantry locations are listed. And if you have any questions, call the county COVID-19 hotline at 301-883-6627. That's 301-883-6627.
Thanks for staying with us. Well, Maryland State Police are looking for a driver involved in a hit and run. The incident took place late last night about 1 a.m. on the westbound shoulder of Route 50 near Annapolis. The trooper was completing a traffic stop when a white Volvo tractor trailer struck the marked police car. There were no injuries reported. Officers are asking anybody to report the truck if it's spotted. There may be damage to the passenger side of the cab and a missing step rail. As a reminder, Maryland's move over law requires drivers approaching emergency vehicles along the shoulder to move over or slow down while passing. Big changes in store for Prince George's after County Executive Angela Alsobrooks announces she is making leadership changes in the police department. Alsobrooks is removing current acting chief Hector Velez and former chief Mike McGaw from the leadership team. McGaw was the police chief before he became deputy CAO for public safety and homeland security. The county executive asked for and received his resignation. Velez will retire. The last day for both is May 7th, just two days before the new police chief Malik Aziz is set to begin. The changes come after federal officials arrested County Police Lieutenant Scott Finn for failure to pay taxes on a security company that he owns. The Maryland General Assembly recently passed several bills that could have a huge impact on immigrants in the state. Attorney and former delegate Marise Morales talks about two bills in particular, the prohibition of ICE facilities in the state and the Driver Privacy Act. We had a number of victories when it comes to pro-immigrant bills, bills that we had been pushing for even when I was in Annapolis. One of the big ticket items is House Bill 16, uh, which would prohibit ICE detention in the state of Maryland. Uh, right now, there are three uh, current contracts in uh, Frederick, Dorchester, and Worcester counties. Those uh, are to be terminated by October 2022. So we're gonna to start to see some of those um, immigrate, um, immigration detainees uh, perhaps being sent elsewhere or, or perhaps not even having to be uh, in detention at all. The other big bill, the Driver Privacy Act, it would prohibit ICE from having access to the MVA roles, which we know that in the state of Maryland, an undocumented driver had um, access to a, uh, what we call a restricted license, not for any travel or federal purposes, but just for the purposes of driving in the state of Maryland. And we also know that um, ICE was using that information to track down um, undocumented immigrants in the state of Maryland. Governor Hogan has threatened to veto both bills, which means they would be up for an override vote next session. Hogan could also decide to take no action, which means the legislation would go into effect without his signature. Both measures passed the legislature with veto-proof majorities. Well, he wants to be your next state's attorney. He's Stanford Frazier, a Howard University alum and a graduate of Harvard Law School. A county native, Frazier today announced his candidacy for state's attorney. A public defender for four years, Frazier says he wants to use the prosecutor's office as a tool to end mass incarceration. He made his announcement via social media this morning. Unfortunately, as a public defender, I've seen kids charged and prosecuted in adult court. I've seen people sit in jail for weeks only to have their case dismissed on their first trial day. And I've seen people plead guilty just to avoid harsh mandatory minimum sentences. And it's my experiences firsthand with mass incarceration that leads to my announcement today. Frazier is campaigning against current state's attorney Aisha Bray Boy. A familiar face is running for Laurel City Council. President of the Prince George's County Young Democrats, Martin Mitchell, is seeking an at-large seat. He announced his candidacy in an online video last week. Mitchell currently sits on the Laurel Board of Appeals and has worked recently with Councilmember Todd Turner. Mitchell says some of his top priorities include transforming Main Street. He's also calling for more entertainment activities for adults like jazz nights. And then the other thing is recreation. We have a, a lack of recreation. A lot of people um, that I've talked to, uh, they want more recreation for their kids, organized recreation. The Boys and Girls Club hasn't, you know, been, been up to par in quite some time. So I want to do a feasibility study to get a YMCA in Laurel. Laurel's election is November 2nd. And don't move. We have more news after the break. Hey, world, I have a quick message. It's about safe driving. All right, let's go. 
Anytime you're driving, have the seatbelt buckle tight. Both hands on the wheel and your phone out of sight. When not in your hand, trying to text somebody back. Because if you do, your car might get smacked. The moral of the story, just put your phone down. The people on the road will stay safe and sound. Put your phone down, put your phone down. People on the road will stay safe and sound. Yeah. <laughs>